Okay, so let's uh, let's get to spraying. Um, so I'm choosing to do this particular scheme, uh, which is the uh, for no particular reason, I guess, other than uh, it's got. Uh, a lot of different colors on it. So it's got the RLM 7475 on the wings, uh, and it's got the uh, RLM 8281 on the fuse lash. So a good mm -hmm. mix of colors. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of controversy about late war Luftwaffe colors, and apparently this is kind of this mix here is a bit of late breaking uh, research. Oh, I didn't know that. But it looks interesting, and I'm looking at this more from an artistic lens than a, than a historical one. So it may be it may be correct, it may not be, but I think it looks I think it looks good. Uh, I also like the two-tone uh, RLM 76, so it's got the traditional bluish tone and then kind of like the duck egg green tone, which I've already uh, no, put on no, the model. No, why was that? Uh, they maybe just ran out or they came from different oh. factories or who knows, right? It's, so many things were mm. up in the air at the, the, towards the end of the war. Um, so I'm going to start spraying. So I've already done the green. Now I use the I use the color call-outs. Again, I've, I've, I think I've said this before, but I'm, I'm a big fan of the lacquer paints. Mm. Uh, whether it's the Tamiya range of lacquers or the Gunzi range, and the Gunzi range has a lot of great colors, and they keep adding to it. They seem to be keep, keeping adding to it on a regular basis. Uh, but they, they also give you the acrylic callouts. But I, the main reason for that is this, which is the leveling thinner. I just find it works really well. I'm a big fan of it. If there's anything that I'm doing from a finishing standpoint, it's oh. getting thin with leveling thinner. Well, now, the nice yeah. thing about the Gunzi paints and yeah. the Tamiya paints is even their acrylics can be thin. Yes, with the because they're acrylic. Lacquers. But why do you prefer those than the acrylics? Is it a uh, smoother finish? It's a smoother finish. Oh, okay. It it comes up it comes out easier out of the airbrush. Okay. Um, yeah. It just, mm. it just I, I I don't. I, I still stick to. Now the, the problem is now we, you need a you we like they stink and they're toxic, so you need to have a spray booth and you need to have a mask. Now when we do it in here mm -hmm. we have neither, but we're not doing a lot and we're not doing it for a long period of time. And as soon as we finish. We open up those doors and we air this place out. Yeah, we're we're in a heated garage, yeah. but we are in a garage. But it's so yeah, wear so, a mask. When you yeah, so when you, if you're spraying acrylics, yeah. you gotta wear a mask. You gotta yeah. do the right thing. Wear we, a mask, and, and you need nice. to vent it. Yeah. So even if you even if you don't even if you just even if you have a mask, but you're not venting, that's a problem. Don't do it. You need to get that's go get true. a go get that's a true. an airbrush uh, booth that, yep. that, that and a vents proper. It. Yeah, proper one that vents it outside through a window, right? There's you know, all kinds mask. of not, stuff. not your uh, COVID mask. Yeah. So now that we've had that health and safety moment, okay. Uh, so I thin the paint. My typical thing is it's about forty percent paint to, or 30, 40 percent paint to sixty, seventy percent thinner. Oh, you like more thinner. I like more thinner. I like to get it. You, well, know. you like going in layers then. Oh yeah. And then now yeah. the main another benefit of that is because of this pre shading that I've done. So now I'm just working on the fuselage. So I've kind of masked off a few areas that have, at least it seemed to me from the instructions here, have hard edges. But normally, um, you know, I don't like, I don't like to mask things off because I don't like the hard edge. So I'm just going to work, and I'm just kind of building up, like the nice thing about using the lighter. And this is, so this is the RLM 81, which is the brown violet, and they're recommending uh, so there's an RLM 81 in the Gunsey range, but they're recommending that you add, you know, it's 80% this and 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 20% uh, red brown just to make. And, and to my eye, it, it looks better. I was kind of really, you know, before we got on camera, I was kind of going back and forth with Harvey on this, that I thought the colors were off. But once you mix them, it looks <laughs> it looks pretty good. It looks like brown violet to my eye. There's also I also contemplated using the AK one, mm. um, but. I just find they just like it just I have no problems with these, you know. Where this one sometimes. Uh, well, these are acrylic. AK is acrylic. They're acrylic, but you can thin it with the lacquers. You, so. You've used this with AK. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Looks good. I, that's the only way I'd use it. Oh, I I use their own thinner for yeah. AK. Yeah. Maybe I'll try using the leveling thinner with AK. So I'm just building up, very light coats. I do see the difference now that you've mixed those two. Yeah. Yeah. That's surprising. I, I do. Surprising yeah, it's, I think it's it's. Now I'm not a loop off expert, but it does look it does look right. It does look right. Because I was there, Dave. You were there. I was. Yeah, in a previous in life, a, in a I was a loop off a pilot. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I just. I'm just saying. Sorry for your luck. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not. Um, like I'm just like again, I'm not using a mat. Like I just have mat or stuff tape where I have hard 
the pure dab part is. Yeah, I noticed that you're you're not doing a full coverage. You're letting it kind yeah. of show through, yeah. giving it a little variation, almost like a modulation in itself. Yeah, because you want to let those, you know, you yeah, put all you this gotta, work into the underlying. Yeah, you don't want to cover it, right? You want to cover it, yeah. You kind of wonder how they came up with those colors back then. Was there some sort of scientific to say, hey, you know, That's a great question. these are colors that make sense in air combat. Mm -hmm. So the nice, so I'm spraying at about, you know, 12 psi. I've got the Mac valve on this where I can, you know, I yeah. can adjust on the airbrush. Uh, so what airbrush is that? It's an HPB. So that's a 0.3 millimeter. Point, uh, two, point two, point I think. two millimeter. Uh, okay, tip. Mm. Now I have a revolution, a 0.3 revolution. I can get, I could use a revolution as well. Yeah. Right, because yeah. they're just. Yeah. yeah. Now I also have a, I have a custom micron, I'm just saying. Um, but I only find those useful off. for modeling. Mottling, yes. I, but you know, as he's spraying, I think if you are serious about the hobby, I find uh, the Revolution a great brush. You want something with a like a 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 type brushes. Yeah, I got two Revolutions. I got the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.3, yeah. and yeah. I, and the 0 0.5 is great for like the gloss coat yes. we were talking about earlier. Yes. And like and priming. Let's talk about that as you're doing that. You yeah. said that you bought a Pash. Single action, yeah. So and Pash H or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I tried it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I might sell it. I still have mine. I, 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 have my go-to is an HP. Have you tried it? Or is it? I have. Um, it's okay. It, it's 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 a single action. It's good for overall coats, but I find it a little bit difficult to clean. That's right. Now I'm always looking, going back and looking at the reference here just to see how far I go over in the green. Mm. But you can see I'm just building it's it up. It's beautiful. It's really, that's a, that's a nice color. I find myself I tend to go over the modulation too much. Every time, oh man, I lost it. That's why you got to. Uh, yeah. That's why you build it up. Yeah. Right. So you go thin layer, low pressure, lowish low pressure. pressure, close to the surface, close to the surface. Yeah. And that's just going to help with your demarcation. Mm -hmm. Demarcation, isn't that a line in? Uh, What's that movie with James Colburn in it? Iron Cross. Demarcation. That's the password. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. At that. the last uh, episode. Demarcation? Yeah, anyways, I'm, I'm always off topic. Again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty close. And that that that's a pretty tight line too. Between yeah, the colors. Not, I mean, you know, you see it. Oh, you can see it. I'll show maybe on this camera up here. You can see where I have. It's not bad. Would you use the blue tack stuff for that? You're doing a freehand. I, I am. So I might use the blue tack on the wings. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Not only the blue tack, I love it, but it, it does give a consistent pattern of. Yeah. Whereas maybe you don't want that in some cases, but well. Yeah, and, and sometimes like they would throw, like I know for RAF aircraft, they had mats that they would throw, like these masks that oh, they would throw on the aircraft. Yeah, so yeah, you got yeah, a bit yeah. of a harder yeah. edge. Yeah. But I, I don't like a harder edge. Like it just doesn't look right. There's a if 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 guys are watching, uh, there's a couple of photos. I can't remember the resource, but it's a it's a key sixty one, Tony, and the modeling on the side of the fuselage in real life in the real period photo, was applied so heavily that it drips. You can see the paint yeah. dripping. From. Have you seen that photo? Yeah, yeah, I've seen, well, I don't know about that specific one, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But, it, but the thing is, if you did that on a model at a show, the judges would nail it. It would look horrible. Yeah, horrible. horrible. But you'd have to show a picture. You'd have to show a picture. But it happened. These guys were not, like, just a plyo. That's got to be beautiful. Except for Italian aircraft. They were exotic. But sometimes you have a photo, replicate the photo. Yeah. I, I, again, it, it kind of, you know, there's the debate of how, how weathered was yeah, the aircraft. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It depends on the subject. Yeah, well, you know, at this time of filming, I just finished my B-17 swoos, and I used period photos for the weathering. And, you know, yeah, it's heavy, but... That's what that's what it was. What it was, yeah. I mean, maybe I'll do a separate episode on that. It, it, a shout-out for myself. Okay, it's in the uh, scale of aircraft modeling part one and two, February, March issue, but you'll see the weathering I did on it. Um, but again... I use photos, and there's a theory that they um, 
thin the paint prior to Pearl Harbor on those B-17s with uh, seawater. So you never know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the thing. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta really check your photos. Your... I mean, that looks pretty good though. Yeah. There's a lot of photos of 109 Ks with this scheme. But there's not a lot of color photos, so there's, you're kind mm. of interpreting. And sometimes the photos will show it from the side, but they don't show it on yeah. the wings. Yeah. And anything with a, a color recolorized photo, it's tough, right? You, yeah, you, I don't know if it's... You don't know if it's accurate or not. The only thing you can tell by those is the contrast in some areas where you can go high or low, but it's really tough to match colors. But then I think we've moved away from FS numbers as we did the hobby 20 years ago. Right? Well, and, and it's, you know, the... Like I used to be a victim of this, and I've talked about this before about you know just being a slave to the color. Yeah. And you know just what looks right to your eye, and, right. and and there's you know especially in, I mean maybe a little bit less on aircraft, I think maybe a little mm -hmm. more exact. Mm -hmm. But you know they were subject to the elements. They were. Armor was subject to the elements and mud and mm -hmm. and you know like how many shades of olive drab are there really? Well, talking about olive drab, and again back to the B seventeen swoosh I did, I chose three or four olive drabs, and when you look at it from afar, you can't tell what the FS color is because it's all different. Yeah, you know? and it's funny. Like I, that's beautiful. Like I'll use. Like I've ordered masks, and I have masks for certain camel patterns that I might use. But I'll always use. Like I'll never put them right on. I'll, I'll put some blue tack yes, or just yes. raise them a bit raise so you get that feather yes. edge. Yes, true. I've got some coming in the mail for my, for my other one of mine. So when I get those, we'll, we'll try those on camera. We're we're. we're were the RAF schemes a la Battle of Britain on the Spits and Hurricanes, were those hand applied or airbrushed? I don't know. I'm asking. Right? I think they were brushed. They but were. they but they had those mats that they would throw yeah, down. Yeah, I see. And I guess it's a modeler's artistic representation by using the blue tack and having a bit of a feathered edge, yeah, I presume. Exactly. That's looking great. Yeah, it's just, this goes down a fair bit. But it's like but after like once you get practice with the airbrush. You know, you almost like I'm saying. I'm just. You're in close. I'd say you're in about four or five millimeters. Yeah. I'm just building it up. And I think that I'm hearing that pressure is really low. Yeah. It sounds about an eight psi to me. Yeah. Sorry about the humming, guys. That's I'm the sorry, little look, I'm Trying to get it. That's looking good. That's oh, really. Low. That's really looking. So good. let's go. Let's go do the next one. So this is all going to be free. There's no masks here. So this is all freehand. Actually, I might remove this guy. Move what? Move this mask. Oh right. Yeah. Let's serve this purpose. Modeling is like ninety percent masking and ten percent painting in some cases. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah, soften yeah, the yeah, edge yeah. on that right, a little right, bit. Right, right, right. Because that's too hard. Yeah, I can see you're going on real thin, and you're going in squiggles. Yeah, you're just kind of building it up. Yeah, without trying to overcoat the previous modulation. Well, this comes down for a bit. Actually, I might even have to come lower on the green. So I'm have to go back and do the green. Uh, yeah, it looks lower. like it's yeah. it looks like it's lower. So I'll just kind of you know mm -hmm. frame this. So when you're when you you know you have it low pressure and you spray thin you can yeah and you just kind of build it up. I also find that it sometimes if if I find the color is too monochromatic that I apply lighter or darker on top of that. So it's almost like a post modulation to give it a little more depth. You can yeah, yeah. I mean you can go back and forth yeah and and yeah I mean uh, you know I was, I was talking to Jerry yesterday about this jerry brennan that isn't and uh, i was asking him do you do you do and he says no I, I just paint and then i do it after the fact all right so he builds it up ah after the fact right right like he doesn't he doesn't bother with the oh he doesn't bother with the modulation like right. he do he does it after it isn't like what he doesn't do he the doesn't, black base and i see and then do the modulation like okay. i did yeah. i do find that if you do this method you got to be careful because you could lose it as i mentioned before yeah without yeah you know, so I do both. Another thing is you can always go back and fix. Like if I go yeah. over where I shouldn't, I can just go back to the green and fix yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's not an issue. No but plan. I do find, would you say that, that modulation now I think is is mandatory to the process, right? To make it I think so. live. 
You wouldn't. I just find that looking at the older models they did when they didn't do it, they just die. Even though, yeah, it's you know maybe they didn't do that like that. They just kind of built out. See, that's nice. That's beautiful. They just built yeah, that out. That's nice. And you liked this kit, yes? Oh, this is great. Yeah, blows together. Finally. Edward got it right on the very last 109 in their range. And what was right about it? Which is a moving um, the uh, putting putting the wing join along a, a panel line as opposed to having uh, this you uh, know having this join where there was no panel line. Right, right. Like why did it take them? Yeah, I don't understand why. Like why? Even 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 the Tamiya does the, the same thing. Like why not just put it back? You know, more and more companies are doing that. You were looking at my uh, new 135th uh, Borders uh, oh, what a, Kate. What a beautiful... It's like there's no there's a spine that, that you don't have to fill the seam because yeah. they've done it on a recessed panel. Line. It's yeah. like, now I know why you guys do these to me and Edward kits rather than me doing a limited run resin, punk yeah. a you're, resin. You're nuts. Well, it just gives you a neat, neat uh, aircraft, but you're, I can you're see. A, you're a glutton. I'm looking at that Kate going, this one's going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, they're getting smart. And even that, like that Dragon 109E, that has like a one-piece fuselage. Yes. Now yes. apparently, I heard they might have missed the like. There's a natural panel line along the spine and right underneath, and they might have missed that. But that's easier to describe than to fill with filler and. Yeah, but that's what they get, that's the hard part. Do you have that kit? No, it has, I don't think it's coming. Oh. I think a lot of manufacturers are now looking at the, the same technology to make it along. You know, panel lines. Yeah. And again, this comes back to contest because you build one of those things, it's way easier to pass the, sn the sniff test with judges because the kit's done the work for you, whereas you got to fill a seam, it's prone to error. That's right, it is. And that's a whole... That's another debate, right? I've, yeah, yeah, and, and, and you, know, you know, you've talked about this, about how the hobby is shifting from building to finishing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and it's become, I mean, you think about our whole society, it's, 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 we've become so disposable, right? Where, yeah. you know, like growing up, you'd, you'd, we'd buy an appliance, it would last 30 years. Now yeah, you're lucky if you get true. five years out of a fridge That's or something, true. right? That's true. So everything's going that way. I'm, re I'm redoing my basement right now, Dave, as you know, and it's got heaters in there that are 40 years old and they still work. Yeah. So, and I'm going to have my hobby room down there. So, oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, you're going. Little area, squiggle, squiggle. Yeah, just build it up gradually. Yeah, build it up. So you're not losing the underlying. Many ways to do this, as long as you enjoy the hobby. Exactly. Now again, just checking your references here, right? Mm -hmm. Where that's. Uh, yeah. A minor thing, when I have, when I do that, David, is I have a little stand for the um, instructions, it's like a pedestal. Oh, that's smart. See? If you don't go that route, I tape it to, uh, before that, I could tape it to, to the, close to me on the wall so I can see it. But mind you, we're doing this live and here in the garage. Oh, I love that. That's great. There you go. So I'll finish... I, can I don't want to spend too much time on camera here, but I'll, see but the, I'll continue working I on can it. see the modulation coming through. Yeah, yeah it's kind of... And I guess the, the, the thing to remember is you're going to... you got It's got to be fairly consistent, right? You don't want to have one modulation showing through and the other one's covered. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes I mean, you may go back over yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch your eye. Test it out one more. Mm -hmm. But I think we're... Looks good. I don't know. I like having I like having the the freehand. I do too. I think it looks better. Yeah, it does. It does because let's just say use the blue tack. It's very it's too, very yeah, it's consistent. It's too, yeah, it's, it's very consistent. It depends, I guess, on the subject. Yeah, it depends on the right. subject. Then. Like I do a lot of Japanese and Italian, and and then it's, especially the Italian stuff, it's all freehand. I can't. I can't use blue tack. It's just the, the well, some of the yeah, so yeah it's, it's too just, intricate. It's too intricate. You'd be there forever, man. Mm -hmm. So again, the more the more you use an airbrush, the better you're going to yep. get with it. Yep. Right. It's just 
That's just how it is. Let's kind of build this up. You can take that to the gnats, you think? Well, it depends what she turns out. Maybe yes, yeah. maybe no. Now we are now at this filming. We're in late February, so it's still time. I want to bring some aircraft, something. Mm. The aircraft to the gnats. I don't know what yet. Oh, when we say gnats, IPMS USA National Convention. Yes. In 2024 in Madison, Wisconsin. We will be there, and we hope to talk to you yeah. about models there. Come and introduce yourself yep. and say hi. And yep. There. Eh, it's mediocre, but it'll do, you know. Not bad. Yeah. And then kind of. Yeah, it's nice. It's beautiful. it's perfect. You can see the modulation shift. Yeah, it's still it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. So what I might do is I might add a bit like a you know like a tan colored yeah. thing or something to this to Yes. On top. On top to, yeah, to, to give it a little more a little, a little light, pop it up. Yes, nice. You know, like I did with the green. Mm-hmm. But uh beautiful. Yeah, so that's it. So we'll we'll um I'll continue yeah. doing the rest of this off camera. Yeah, well, and then next time uh we'll uh maybe we'll look at doing a gloss coat and decals. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll, uh, we'll we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.